we are in Baltimore. Gonna do some exploring. Just found some street parking. So much cheaper than the lots where we were going. 125 an hour versus six dollars for the first 20 minutes. <laughs> Shows if you're willing to walk a few blocks, it can be worth it. Use your legs, save we're, some money. We're heading over to the historic ships this morning before we go to our meetup. Getting some tickets, but it's $15 per adult for two, or 18 for four ships. We're only doing two ships, because that's all we need. Okay. We're all good? Yep. So, which ones do you want to go see? We have to figure out which one we're going to see. The so we're going to start with the sub, because how many times can you walk onto a sub? Not many. I think this was the last sub to torpedo anyone in World War II or something? We'll Maybe. Have to look. Attention, to ensure your safety, Please turn and face all ladders. Adults should go down ladders before children. Please watch your step. Torpedoes launched from this room sank the last enemy ships during World War II. The birthing for about 12 to 15 crewmen. The crewmen would use the racks hanging near the overhead to sleep during their off watch hours. A head or toilet and a sink are also located at the forward end of this compartment. The metal tables after the racks are called mine tables. They are used for forming maintenance on torpedoes or mines. So Courtney totally just said the bathroom on the submarine's about the size of ours. Except they don't have a shower. Except they don't have a shower. So the officer of the deck up above in the control room would have someone switch the motor order telegraph to say what speed he wanted, and that would be reflected down here by the red arrow going to a different speed. Then down here, a bell rang, a crew member would use the black knob on that to bring the black arrow to match the red arrow, and then the two men at the two controls with all the levers would um, adjust the speed accordingly. Look at the levers. Port reversal, port starter, Generator 2, what are these over here? Oh, this is the telephone, so he can call up to all the different things. Okay. Here's a diesel engine. Look at this wrench. <laughs> It's also a pretty <laughs> massive wrench. And it usually was 120 degrees in here. Humid. Oh, this is how they made fresh water. Some under bunk storage. Yep. Bunk would raise up. Storage. Mixing bowl. Yeah, it's a big mixing bowl. You're cooking for 80 people, though. You're cooking for a lot of people in that tiny kitchen. Garbage disposal. 
These are like the big, these are these things. They're like. Do they also make that sound? Well, that was pretty cool to see. Lots of tight quarters, but they have everything they needed. Everything's just smaller, kind of like in a RV, perhaps. But this one goes underwater, and you can kill people with it. So. <laughs> And you, and you have no air except for what's there. And there's a lot of there's very that important too. functionality to a submarine. And but it could hold 80 people. Yeah. Very tight quarters. RVs can't do that. No. This was a really interesting th thing to see. I've never actually seen a submarine in person before. So I really enjoyed that. That was... That was cool. It was like yeah. a glimpse into another time, into another world. For sure. All these buttons and dials and knobs and turn things and, and push things and those are buttons. That, that's my term for a button. Oh, so much there. Really cool to see. And for our second and last ship, we're going to go to the Coast Guard, which sailed in 1936 and was in Pearl Harbor, I believe. Yeah. Yep. All right. Hey, look, we found the Coast Guard ship. That wasn't hard. Courtney just said I'm weird, but I think I'm perfectly normal in every way. Let me know. Let me know. Am I weird or am I normal? I think I'm normal. Maybe, yeah, I'm normal. She, she's ignoring me now. This is what she does when I start to annoy her. She just gives a little smirk and it's like, okay, I don't know this guy. I really don't know this guy. And down we go. Compared to the submarine we were just on, this, oh, yeah, is, this is downright spacious. Yeah, look at this. It's like a mansion in here. Coffee pot, meeting table. Well, subs were made to be nice and inconspicuous. It's true. I think officers here had a little bit better. <laughs> this is not exactly inconspicuous. in the galley on the main deck above and was sent to the cruise mess via the dumbwaiter, which can be seen next to the serving line. Loading the gun. Barber shop. Camera cost thirty three dollars. <laughs> Thinking 
and that's not how they normally have their rooms. You gotta clean your windows. So what did you think, Courtney? That was really cool. Both seeing, especially seeing the submarine and then seeing the ship. It In that of, order, yeah. it makes this look downright luxurious, like a mansion. It does. You get so much room in there compared to a sub. <laughs> But it's just very interesting to see how people lived and fought and what they did and to read the history and yeah. She's a reader as you saw. I just like to walk around and look at the things. She has to read everything. I don't read everything, but most I read a things. Lot of it. She has to read most things. <laughs> it helps me feel like I'm there. It's very cool. So that was a fun little stop in Baltimore for our meetup. I think we might have a little time to do something else before we head over there, but let's see what we do. We're at Fells Point in Baltimore, where the streets are made of cobblestone. Yeah, it's a historic area here in Baltimore, so we thought we'd go and take a walk and see it before we head to the meetup. Old historic brick buildings, too. Yeah, this is pretty cool. It's very interesting. Beer. Oh, that has good things written all over it. And the truth is, is that the conference is good. You know, as crummy as it's been the last couple days, we picked the perfect day, the perfect day to be down in Baltimore. Sunny skies, nice temperatures. Yep. Isn't that right, Courtney? It's lovely. So when you're in a big city like this, sometimes it's hard to keep track of your car because you easily get turned around at what street you're on and where you parked. There's a Google Maps feature that lets you mark where your car is when you park it. Yep. And if you don't know how, we're gonna show you right now. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> By the way, the truck's right over there. And here we are. Courtney, would you like to do the honors? Sure. All you need to do is when you're in Google Maps, there's a little blue dot, which is where you're currently standing. When, so when you park, you tap it and set as parking location. And it makes this little P. And when you zoom out of the map, no matter where you are, that P will stick around. And all you have to do is click it, saved parking, and you can get directions back to where you parked. Well, hello. Hi, Penny. Hello. Hello. We're well, as usual, that meetup went very, very well. It was awesome. Every meetup we go to, we meet really cool people, have awesome discussions, and I don't know, I just always come out of it feeling energized and like super excited about the channel and about RVing and everything else. So thanks to everyone who came to Brewer's Cask in Baltimore, especially since Google Maps said it was closed. It yeah, it was weird. It thought it opened at four, but it was open. Yes. We had a great time, had a good lunch, and uh, now we're back with puppies. We're going to take them for a walk and chill out for the rest of the day. That's right. So, yeah. There we go. More, more adventures to come. More. <laughs> the adventure continues. <laughs>
Get 